Uh, do we, this is the time that we give citizens a chance to share anything they want to share with the council. Any concerns, any, uh, any good stuff, any bad stuff, anything that you have to share. Would anyone at this time like to share uh, from the citizens here at Carthage? Uh, then we'll go on uh, to. We have, you did have something. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's on the agenda. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Yes. I would oh. like to say something to sure. the citizens. I thought you wanted to be so point for you. Um, but I just like to say that I feel like overall the town of Carthage and the citizens of Carthage did a good job making Halloween fun for the kids this year. So I, I just really thought it was a good down to have end and it worked well for all the families. And hopefully next year we can get back to normal. And that we can close the street. The only thing I would like to have could we have close the street, but uh, I realize this should be good, and that I'd like to next year. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everybody. You're right. Um, okay, uh, then we go on to the different reports on the mayor's report. I just want to uh, three things here the, uh, the Ball State classes that uh, we couldn't quite go through with in the fall because of some technical stuff. And, uh, we'll start for sure in the spring. And there are going to be two classes, on, uh, one on Tuesday nights, one on Thursday nights at 6 p.m. We're going to have English composition and an introductory to sociology. It uh, starts on January 19th, so if you know anyone graduating who would like to have their classes here rather than going all the way to Gallatin, or any folks who maybe started for a degree, an associate's degree, didn't quite finish, they can come down with a what's called a reconnect uh, scholarship. So their tuition is paid on this, so it's a really wonderful chance for a lot of folks to have a, a leg up for a little higher education here. Um, we're having the Veterans Parade on November 8th at 2 p.m. That's a Sunday. The parade goes from Carmack Avenue down Main Street to downtown where they're being addressed by uh, Major General Tommy Baker. We'll give an address there. The Christmas Parade will be Sunday, November 29th at 4.30 and it travels down Main Street from Industrial Drive to to the uh, downtown courthouse, and there will be some music and tree lighting there. Um, that's all for right now. Uh, okay, uh, city attorney report? I don't have a formal report, but I'm glad to answer any questions. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, city reporter? I don't have anything going on over there at this time. Okay, thank you. Our police chief, Chief Davis? I don't have anything at this time. Okay. Thank you. Is that under? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I see a map photo. It wasn't on mine. I'm sorry, Teresa. Jones.
So you're saying we can we can use the central region area we're going to get here. We can use that out of code funding because we're meeting it here. We're using it, so we reallocate. Yes, uh, that is the, that is that is the, the focus plan. I have run this by the gentleman who did get our contact for this, and he said that yes, that's good for a very strong case for that because we are having to move the facility to all of the because if not, we would be down to call. Now, is this reimbursed revenue from the state? Like, once we do it, they'll reimburse us the revenue, and that'll show up on our revenues. So, we, we're just temporarily paying for it um, until they, you know, refund us back and prove it. But, like I said, though, we are going over our lot just a little bit, but there is some of these funds that are available in the budget for the, for the city buildings. So, that's why I just want to go over with you all on the code. And then um, also there's been, uh, there is uh, something else that I've been working on as I've been looking through the numbers and uh, working with our auditor. Uh, there's some funds that may need to go from general fund over to more super fund. And so I've been on the phone with our auditor and also been talking about that. And uh, they are suggesting that I go ahead and uh, talk to the comptroller's office.
one, we have the additional grant funds in line, and two, because of the construction of asphalt. I think there's something about asphalt plants that close down during the winter. Um, so he recommends we do the bidding until then. So that is basically the next step. Yeah, yeah. And I think, um, as you said, part of the confusion was that Tima thought this was in a flood way, but it actually wasn't. It so, wasn't. It was a flood plain. Yes, and that's a, a difference, and that kind of threw us off time-wise because we had to send in additional reports that we found out right. after the fact. Um, any questions about that particular grant? Mm -hmm. And that contract in December 14, uh, 2021, I believe. So. Okay. Uh, the next grant that we apply for is the Blue Cross Playground grant through Alice yes. and UCDD. It's the Blue Cross Healthy Place grant. That's a, that's a program through the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee Foundation. Um, this grant was submitted, or this application was submitted in August 31st. Um, Carthage applied for a, a multifaceted inclusive playground and fitness equipment area for the Carthage City Park um, for an area near the walking trail. Um, the grant awards will likely be announced in January of 2021. Um, so we're just kind of waiting on that one. That's a very competitive statewide program. <coughs> Over 20 letters of support from citizens, which is great. Really, yeah. Citizens and organizations. That's great. We've got a lot of good support. And then the third grant uh, that we're hoping for is the Healthy Built Environment. And yeah. we're hoping we have a we'll talk about that. Yeah, um, this one's through the Department of Health. It's a Healthy Built Environment grant. Um, we submitted a letter of intent for this one, I guess, last week, October 29th, um, which is basically a pre application. So the project was for, um, we requested $80,000 to cover a portion of the pool repairs to Carthage City Pool. Um, and then the Department of Health will review those letters of intent. We should know in early December if we're invited to fully apply. So if we fully apply, that will be January. And I think the, the fund is a grant contract that's right next summer, I believe it's July. So the project will start with that. I know there's some issues with this, big issues with the swimming pool, so that was Insurance said that there are repairs that have to be made in the school for us to keep using it. And, and Les and Derek, and uh, we've looked at it, y'all looked at it very closely. So we've got some people who uh, have given several estimates, but this will help toward the repair. It will be covered, but it will help toward it if we can get that. Okay, the, um, there's also, uh, we're hoping, and that's a resolution tonight that will be working on but there's a uh, TDOT has what they call a multimodal grant and um, for some time now we've been hearing that we would love to have some lighting at the intersection of I-25 and Upper Ferry Road because it's very dark there as you're coming out of Walmart and, and trying to turn and sometimes pedestrians are cut, crossing there so this grant just happened to come along and Mark W at UCDD called and said I think we better apply for this it's a 5% match, which is unheard of. Um, I think he's, do you have him on the phone, Allison, in case we need Yeah, I do. I have him. Um, you want me to bring this? That would be fine. Would it be better if you want to have a resolution? I'm here. I'm here. I don't know where this. We have a resolution on a business coming up about that. Let me see. Mark, would you? Just give a general overview, and then when we get to the resolution, we might have some more questions. Can you hear us okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can you sort of give a thumbnail of what this would cover down there? The grant? Yes, yes ma'am. Thank you, uh, Mayor Smith. Uh, this is Mark Denny. I'm the Del Hall RPO coordinator for uh, this region. Uh, Mayor Smith may have already covered this, so I'm sorry if I'm duplicating, but this is for a multimodal access grant that TDOT has in the world of grants that we work in. It's sort of the golden egg because it only requires a 5% match from the uh, local applicant. So if you get it, and they are competitive, but if you get it, you're talking about a 95% investment, infrastructure investment in your community. So that's the general. Uh, specifically, what this is, is a uh, pedestrian crosswalk 
and the signalization that goes along with that and uh, and the uh, required lighting uh, for the crossing where it crosses from Upper Ferry Road across State Route 25 there going over towards Walmart. Uh, it's not a complicated project. Uh, Mayor Smith and the engineer who helped uh, with this, we talked the other day, she uh, stated that a big citizen concern had to do with not only the pedestrians crossing there that was dangerous, but the motorists at night could not see them, so we made, to, made sure to include appropriate lighting in the project. Um, so, just generally, uh, it came in for the total project is right at $300,000. So that would be asking uh, Carthage for a $16,000 investment, that's 5%. The way these grants work, they are recent reimbursement grants. So if it's awarded, you go through TDOT's process of doing the environmental and you, know, you start with, with, the, uh, with that. And at each stage of the process through the environmental and planning and construction and so forth, uh, you, you know, you're paying your contract to do the work. They present the bill to Carthage Carthage pays them in full, and then I work with you all to submit the reimbursement paperwork. The usual turnaround is you get paid, you get 95% reimbursed within about a month. Okay. Uh, uh, we're going to actually have a resolution about this in business, so can we could we wait and do questions when that comes up? Could you hold on for a while with us, do you think? There'll be a few more sure. minutes. Okay. Before we vote on a resolution, shouldn't we be able to ask questions about it? Well, we're we, just going to read the resolution. No, no, we're going to then we are discussing asking okay. questions. Yeah, there'll be an audit on our business. Okay. Um, okay, so that that let me come up as under new business item. We've got it here from the state government. I think this is one of the first ones. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mark. We'll be back here in just a couple minutes. Um, hopefully. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so we go now to uh, grant. Oh, the only other thing I wanted to report on is the, uh, the two state revolving fund loans that we uh, have in the process of this. One has been applied for and accepted, is that's the water line, people's alley water line, and that they're moving forward with that as far as the engineers. And then I and I pilot project, we're uh, up, as we mentioned, for a pilot project that would um, be one of three in the state if we get it. It's a 50 50. 50% principal forgiveness on it, and it would, it would be a study of all of our sewer system and the, how to approach it in, in the most economical way to, to replace the, the lines needed for the I-9. So uh, that's moving forward. We'll hear more from the state soon on those, both of those. Okay, we're going to unfinished business. Uh, first, we have a second reading, well, actually, the, the vote on <coughs> what we had public hearing on earlier, the ordinance. P-202001, okay. Are we still on the resolution that he's on the phone? No, no, no. That's coming back in business. He's just telling us a little bit about it. This is the flood ordinance. Yeah, this is the flood ordinance here. So this is the one that we need to task for TEMA to, for our insurance. Insurance to be guaranteed for our folks here. So, do I hear a motion to pass this on second reading? I'll make a motion. Thank you. Second time, Matt. Any further discussion about that? If not, all in favor of passing on second reading this ordinance? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, then uh, the next is. Um, Chief, do we, we don't have an invoice, is that what you were saying? The next no, item is an invoice for the fire chief. No invoice only if you buy the truck this time. Hope okay. you get the truck back tomorrow and I'll have you invoice again. Okay, so you think we have all the repairs that we need on that then? Correct. I'm sure it hope so. Okay, okay. Well, yeah, you know what you mean. Uh, the third unfinished business is uh, commercial trash. Council Eagle, did you want to say okay. something? Okay, uh, I've got. 
are we coming back to this? Because we were real talking about that. Uh, no, that's, yes, that was the title of the business. It's going to be in there. Okay, yes. I apologize. All right, so basically, here's what we found with the planning commission is the planning commission has nothing to do with trash. That is a full on council decision. We made a decision. Basically, we got it. They're not going to give a recommendation. They don't want to give a recommendation because it's not. It doesn't follow that at the council. So, pick a location. That's where we're at. Do you have a motion you want to make concerning the council? Uh, I'm, I'm going to leave it up to y'all. I'm, I'm going to try to let y'all decide. I, I, I have a question. I'm not sure where we are is actually doing this project. I, I know last time we were together, if we had a meeting, it was mentioned that we had decided to do this project, but I don't remember being at that meeting, maybe on this type of meeting. So where are we? Are we just looking into it? Are we absolutely doing it? How did the council We are 100% doing it. We, the last thing we voted on was to have the planning commission decide where we put the thing, to, where we put the trash location. We had three locations, saying the one location was right there by a Third Avenue. The other location was a parking lot out here. The other location was a parking lot down here at the city hall. Those were the three locations. And we, tell me again, the Third Avenue one was that was the one right by the fire hall. That was the one that you had mentioned. Okay, yeah, yeah, right by the fire hall. Fire hall. Um, I haven't heard from anyone on preferences. Where, wherever it wants to go, but we voted to say uh, we'll set up the planning commission because the planning commission will need to come up with plans for it. The planning commission found out that's not in, under their jurisdiction. That is the same as any other city council thing, so they're throwing it back up to us. So we're at the point of where we're putting it. I think Mr. Robinson was going to come to here, but he's out of town. He was the one who we've been looking at, I think, Digger's property or something and he was I've had like several that. people express displeasure of the idea of putting it near the fire call. Okay. So we'll take that one off the table then. Was it near the fire hall? Near the fire hall. In the fire hall or beside the building. We don't need a motion. We can talk right now. Excuse me, Mr. Morgan. So you can have an informal discussion in a small board if you'd like. Um, I think what seems appropriate if someone would like has a, wants to make a motion for a particular site now would be a good time. If you want to have a preliminary informal discussion at the small board, you can do that before there's a motion. Okay. Well, since I wasn't here, and I don't remember this vote, I'm old, but I don't think I've, I've heard this vote. I have concerns that that our city government is even doing this when it's going to cost taxpayers. And we're, we're always talking about we want government to be reduced in the, in the, in the uh, private sector. And so maybe it's a little bit late for me to be saying this, but I was very surprised at the last meeting when it said we're going to do this because I thought it was still in a planning stage. But I really don't think this is an appropriate uh, taxpayer item that we should be doing. I think it's going to cost our taxpayers and our private citizens have to pay for well, their trash. Yeah. So. All right, we're just providing this water. We're providing this water, and then if business owner wants access to that, then they'll pay a fee. They're not required to pay that fee. But don't we, do we have to, who pays for it? And who pays for the fence that goes around it and all that? Who has to pay for it? The taxpayers pay for it. The taxpayers who are bringing revenue for the city, they pay through it for, through their taxes. And if should they go ahead and decide to have that trash service, they'll pay for the key. But taxpayers, businesses pay for it as well. Now, if we want to go on that fiscal conservative binge, I'm all there for it. But go ahead and apply it to everything. Don't just pick and choose on it. I'm okay with it. So, but right now, this has been a vote. So yeah, we actually had a public, I don't believe we actually had a public hearing on picking sites that are talking about the sites. Have we? No, we have, we, we want to get, the next thing is to pick a site. I don't know that'd be up to, do we have to have a public hearing for the site or do we go for it? I don't think we have to, but. We don't, we don't have to have, assuming again that it's a, it's a town owned. Uh, it's a town owned. Yeah. I would, I would prefer we did have a public hearing because we don't know how close proximity to other homes. Well, the two the two sites we narrowed it down to last council meeting to bring it back up, you all check it out for yourselves. We did vote on this, we've already come to conclusion on it. It is a done deal deal. We have narrowed it down to two sites. The site A is gonna be over here at the city parking lot in the corner we were talking about, or somewhere else, but in the corner. We had to be within walking distance of places that we did. Site two was gonna be in the Museum Square parking lot here. Um, seeing that we're short on parking, um, I, I, I would recommend seeing, we used to have this, uh, before I was on the council, we had uh, commercial trash where people would put the trash in 
a uh, couple trucks we had up here. We're trying to do something a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer, trying to catch up with every other city in the state and have a commercial trash service for our taxpayers. So that's where I'm at. I want to just go ahead and make a motion, and that way we can vote forward to put in the uh, city parking lot. Make a I don't want to say that. Motion second. Is there discussion on this? I just mentioned to me, I'd like to add to that that we do have the public forum because I have yet to hear businesses that are interested in needing that. So I would like to have the, the public hearing if we could add that to motion. Do we know who's, I know your business is interested. Is anyone? Any other I have a trash right now, so this is not a special pet product are there, for me. Are there so any other reasons we even need it? Well, the, the, the hotel and then the filming station where I open, <coughs> and then any other. It's for future business. Okay. business. I mean, I, I'm going to sit here and look at how we're basically, you're, we want to talk about being fiscally conservative, and we're going to put uh, $300,000 in for one single business up here for Walmart, so people across the street. But we're going to go ahead and ignore all the downtown businesses that have been here for decades. And, okay, but this is a this is a need that's been happening. I'm still speaking, thank you. That's not from Walmart. Okay, I'm still speaking. I'm still speaking. That is not from Walmart. I'm still speaking. Okay, can I finish speaking? Please go ahead. Thank you, appreciate it. I'd like to be looking out. I want to do something to look out for businesses here, help promote growth, take care of other businesses that might need it, and let's do it. We're sitting, we're, um, we do it for all the residents. Why can't we do it for commercial businesses? I'm just saying, who's asking for it? What businesses need yes. it? I'm not saying it doesn't need to happen. Talk to your constituents. <coughs> they they know my number. Nobody's called and said we need a trash. I don't know. I'm just a little bit concerned that there's been a They called me Is too. Is it needed? Well, we have a public. My we have a public. Tell you what, I've gone door to door. I've asked businesses. I recommend you go door to door. Start talking to businesses as well. Let's have a public hearing. We can do it right here. You want to make a motion for that? Well, what, a, what's the? There's a motion and a second on the board. This is discussion okay, for the motion. I'm sorry. Now, if I may, just briefly with respect to the planning commission, I, I do believe that the town, if this council chooses a site which it wants to do any improvements to, to locate a dumpster or other trash collection facility, that plan does need to be reviewed by planning commission and recommended for approval or not. Uh, once you get to that point, I, I thought we were at that point a couple months ago. But we we the direction, not understandably. Yeah, we were not at that point. Uh, we were at the point of choosing a site, but we all deferred to the planning commission. We thought the planning commission would do a better job of so choosing the site. Uh, Mr. Kinslow uh, found out that it wasn't under the planning commission to do that. But yes, uh, once we choose a site, then it's back out of our hands. It goes to the planning commission, and then after it goes, if it gets approved by the planning commission, you come back. I don't have, I have a problem with the public hearing. Let's do a public hearing. But this would be the proper procedure to get there. It's something that we've been kicking the can for almost an entire year now. And I'm going to get done. Do you need to amend your motion to include the public here? I don't think, I mean, I think when it came back to the Planning Commission, then it come up for a vote. And at that time, we could go ahead and vote and say, hey, let's, uh, let's do a let's see if we do a public hearing. I don't think we need to have a motion for it. But now, but, and I do think um, to Council of Council, Point, I think you'll need to have a policy in place if the town wants to move forward with it, and that will need to be approved by the council. Whatever terms that the town is going to offer to uh, businesses within the area, that still has to be fleshed out and approved. And, and I tend to agree, it's certainly better if it's cost neutral to the town, if they reimburse their expenses, at least for the, the service that's being provided, not necessarily for absolute Again, all that to say, it'll have to come back to you once the site has been approved and you can have a public hearing at that point. So, Dan, you are the BMP for that? Um, again, I think it would just be something that we would have to uh, look at the cost and, and then allocate it, and you would have to approve the, the terms of uh, So, I'll make an amendment on my motion that um, this be provided that we have a BMP written out um, after the planning commission goes over it. Uh, there is a policy and procedure in place before we build anything. Um, as far as how the, how the rules work, or anything like that, it's reviewed before the council, and we approve that PMP, and then go from there. And at that time, I think it would be appropriate to have a public hearing. I don't think it's something we need to make a motion on. I have no issues with the public hearing whatsoever. I just want to make sure we're doing this. We're going to stick to Robert's rules. We're going to stick to Robert's rules. We're going to be fiscally concerned. Let's do it all the way around. 
So, is there any further discussion on this motion and second? Would you please read it back? I, I cannot read that back. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, let me repeat. Um, basically, it's the original motion. Okay. And we're going to have a policy and procedure on it. Okay. Um, and so the, the, that policy and procedure needs to be read to the council after the planning. Like, let's say let's say we pick this side and this gets approved, okay? Then it's going to go to the planning. Uh, the I understood planning what you said. Okay, yeah. I, I fully understood. You made gotcha. it very simple. Right. But when it comes back to us, we need to be able to see it with the policy and procedure in hand, not just blanket state. Well, it's commercial trash. There needs to be the rules, what's going on, how much it costs for uh, uh, whatever tiers there are, things like that. It needs to have a policy and procedure ready to go. And we vote on the trash being built with the expectations of what's going to be happening in writing in a policy and procedure that's down there at City. So we pretty much voted to find a location. That's, that's, that's where we are tonight. Thank you. <coughs> now I've got a question. If we vote for the Parking lot down there in a bit. What ensures that we will have a public hearing? And if, if the public hearing is basically opposed to it, what, what do we do from there? Yeah, well, so, so, this is just a, this motion, as I understand it, and what I would interpret it, is just selecting the site, preparing a plan for the site to submit to the planning commission. This still has to come back before you to approve the construction of the site based upon planning conditions, planning commission's recommendation or, or non recommendation. Uh, and then at that same time, we will approve the policy and procedure for how this will work with respect to the dumpster and fees. If none of that passes, it'll just go away and it won't, won't happen. And this all falls under the plan of the mayor that we, we talked about almost a couple of years ago. Was, <coughs> we find a need before we find an expense. We found a need, found an expense. Now, y'all don't hear that need. I guess it's just you haven't heard it before. And we can have, I, I'm all for it because. Can hear the need on it and if the public comes out and they say we don't want it we don't want it vote it now we don't want to vote for something the public doesn't want absolutely and also the other part is i'm going to go and let you all know i have trash service this has nothing to do with me so you all aren't hurting me my business or jabbing me politically if you vote against this trash service i don't care i'm just trying to represent the people and i'm trying to get ahead of things and plan so we can get a better tax revenue base on sales tax and be able to invite the town for new businesses and take care of old ones so and so I'm understanding. So the need would be, first of all, we find out what businesses need this right now, what businesses have their own service. So that would be finding the need. And once we find the need, we can answer some of those questions. I think. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it, we're, it's, it's being proactive, not reactive. If we're proactive instead of reactive, maybe we could be proactive on needs of growth. But we're right now we are yes we are being reactive so we also need to adjust for future growth in this trash service so people say oh they got trash service there okay and we want to make sure that's in there as well so can we go ahead then and take a vote on we need to vote on the amendment this, we need to vote on so vote on was there an amendment on this i think yes the amendment to this amendment to the second okay what was the amendment bring back the, to the council the policy and procedures okay. along with the uh, okay. site. So we will vote first on the amendment to bring back the policy and procedures. Do I uh, any further discussion? If not, let's Do I get a second on the amendment? I'll vote it. I'll see it. If it's an official. Okay. Just to be clear, is this taken mm -hmm. off of the site next to Carter on the No, no. This is for the this is for the site that's down here. This is on, here. on the city park. Yeah. Like on the city park. Has right. nothing to do with the park hardware right. or the fire hall. Well, the reason why I ask that, you know, if he doesn't have a business in there now, a future business that will come in there, I sure want more business with the trash dump right next door. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's I definitely want that. Did you ask? Or any other business. Yeah. Or my history or whatever. So, Les, we talked about. Where, where would you like to make a video on the park lot? Would you say my park lot? Les, I'd like you to put it where you think is the most appropriate place for it. That's your park lot. But I, I put it somewhere that's. Uh, I mean, let's, let's make it look pretty down there. I mean, if we're going to have trash services, let's have a nice trash service. Are you saying that the parking lot's pretty full cool already? Well, looks better than anything. Look at it. You know, we do well in parks and stuff. We got that. You know. I recommend not put it down there. Y'all do what you want to do. You know. What'd y'all do with them two big trucks though? 
Do what? What do y'all do with the two big trucks? Well, we're not going to park in that either. We can't. Well, I'm saying with that amount of space that y'all had down there before, we made it work. Can we make it work again? I don't know. If everybody keeps claiming good, that was the problem. Everybody was throwing trash on the ground. People from Marshall were buying trash over here, throwing it in there. And I said, from all guys. Yeah, lock and key. Nobody throwing trash in there, keeping it clean. You can go with that. <laughs> there was discussion. We're going to be throwing it on the fence. Well, not me, I'm not going to bring it up. I'll get you right back when I get bring it up. No, because I've seen the dump trucks down there good. on the weekends, and they just, people just bring the trash and dump it up. Yeah. I mean, we can keep kicking this. This can go to the next council, and the council after that. But eventually, we're, I mean, we're literally one of the last cities in the town to have a trash room, and it's been voted on. Well, don't get me wrong, I don't think we will have a trash, but yeah. you got to realize, you know, what we got down there. You know, they're like, part of my pool. Mr. Robinson and I talked with Digger about a space he has against the wall down down this way, right about down here. Uh, and I thought he was going to try to. So let's get back. We got a motion and an amendment on. We got an amendment to vote on. We've already gone through all this. Okay, let's all in favor of the vote of the amendment to bring back the uh, Okay, we're going to read policy and procedures. That's the First Amendment. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, uh. Opposed? Okay, then the full motion will be to put the, park, the trash down here on the city parking lot and bring back the policy and procedures of how that would go would happen. Uh, all in favor, please. Aye. Uh. Opposed? Trash, the commercial trash service, and have a public hearing. Perfect. 
Do I have a second to that motion? Second. Do I have a second? Do I have any discussion on that, please? Is that something that the museum needs to speak on? Wouldn't be a bad idea. Well, I would highly encourage that we invite them out to the meeting whenever we, if we approve it. Any further discussion on that, please? All right, maybe we have a roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Ross? Yes. Councilwoman Canapa? No. Councilwoman Scott? Yes. Councilman Eagle? Yes. Councilman Petty? No. Councilman Reese? No.
I'm making a motion to add a new business item to the agenda on the very front end here about um, employees being locked into the building, not being able to get in the building, uh, keys, something to that effect. And I have a second. I'll second. So an item about employees having key, keys to the building, is that what you're saying? No, if you heard what I said, I didn't say that. So I'll repeat my motion. Uh, I'd like to. Well, it's an agenda item. Okay. Do you want to hear it again? I, I'm sorry. Are you adding an item? I'm adding an agenda, agenda item, item, yes. I'm doing it's a third motion, which would be the proper procedure to okay. do so. Okay, so yeah, you're making a motion to add. The first of new business for the beginning of new business, yes. Okay. So there's a motion to add an item on the agenda of my employees and keys buildings, I believe. Employees are being locked in the building. They are this security. They, there's, yes, they're being locked in the building. There's an issue with keys. I'd like to hear from the employees, and I'd like to hear when they do business in the first area. Okay. Do business. Uh, we'll add in an item. Is it, oh, let's take a vote to add an item to the agenda. All in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. Uh, now, would you like to make a motion, please? Uh, so what I've heard is, I'm not making a motion, I'm making a statement. And he's already said that we can do that, so you don't have to interrupt me, thank you. Um, allegedly, we have employees inside of the building down here who uh, can't get out right now because they're locked in. And if I'm misquoting that, feel free to correct me. Um, I think we have a few employees here tonight to speak to that regards, and I'd like to cede the floor to them. Can you make a motion about what we're talking about? I'm not sure. Yeah, I think technically to have someone speak, you have to have a motion. Yeah, have a motion. Okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion to have Julie and Cindy speak in that regards. You can have a motion to allow employees to speak to this issue for discussion purposes, but again, I, I do think the council needs to approve that. Before. Absolutely. I'll say. Okay, we have a motion to allow employees to speak to an issue of being locked inside the city hall. Uh, do I have a... Let's vote on that. All in favor? Two. Uh, 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 Any opposed? Okay. And, uh, I do want to clarify this, I don't, and I don't know what's going on, but that no employees are required or compelled to come forward to talk to this issue at all. It's completely Does anyone wish to speak to this issue? Yes, yeah, I do. Uh, last week, new policies and procedures were put into place concerning the city hall. Doors being locked at certain times, and the same was true for the Do you all have keys? I'm sorry, did you not call the police to let you out? They were busy. They were on the call. Okay, we have a key to the front door in, in your office also. We were told we weren't going to have access to that key unless it was an emergency. No, it's it's there to let you out. Or you could have called me. I was there. I would have been glad to. Well, what, what, what is going on is that we're trying to make a secure building because we quite a bit of money to secure the front of the building. We're trying to secure the back of the building. The police lock it down after everyone has left. And if I had known you were still there, I would have been glad to let you out. Do the, you don't have keys to the building at all? The interior, our offices, we have access to the vault. The front door was always open 24 seven right. pre-COVID. Um, after COVID, the bank will not allow us to have a key to access the do y'all feel more secure or more trapped? Trapped. Okay. Well, may I clarify this? There are several keys. The, the police have keys. They open it every morning at, at 7 o'clock for employees to come in. None of the 
none of the public works men in the back. The two supervisors have keys, the other employees do not. There's a supervisor's keys in Teresa's office. There's one, in, and part of what we're trying to do is, is to secure the building to protect the employees. Now, if you don't want to have a security to protect them. Are you, are you trying to protect the, the building from the employees themselves? I mean, no. if they can't, that, I mean, I, my employees have keys to my office. Well, every, every all my employees, employees have keys to my office. Even my apartment, I mean, okay, but I feel that, like if we trust them enough to do with the, the books and handle the money and the records and everything else, surely we can allow, we can well, trust them enough to open the front door. I agree. Well, I mean, I don't see how it's, it's, to me, we're securing the building call. from people on the, on the outside. The not from Mayor Smith, outside. what happens if there's a fire and they're sitting in their trap? We and you have restricted key, them from having a key to get out? We have keys all over. They have a key in their department. There's a key, there are two keys, I think. We well, forgot to keep all the while we let them have one. They do have one in their department. No, to the, in, to the exterior. I mean, but I just they can, When they come right. in every morning, the, the door's already open. When they come in every morning, the only time that would, they would need a key is if they came in after hours, I and then they need them. to let the police know they're there. City Attorney Moore, is, I don't know if this would be appropriate or not. You can tell me if it isn't. Uh, would it be appropriate for us to go ahead and, as a council, vote that our ladies up front have keys so that they can access safely in and out of there? You, you can certainly make that motion as policy of the town that you, mm -hmm. you want employees to have keys to access the building. Again, I. Yeah, because of the way the charter is written, the question is whether the mayor has that authority. I think it, well, she's in charge of the day-to-day -day operation of the town, mm -hmm. but you can certainly say your preference as policy as to how you think that. Well, we need to have a resolution, or well, how would that? How would that be? May, may I? Am I asking that? City of Boise wants to speak. Can we hear from her? Yes, Julie. I just wanted to wait my turn. Um, we were also given a sheet of paper. That stated at four o'clock we are not to go out the back so you don't have access there we're not allowed to go out back and we also had to wait for someone from the police department to let us out the door um I where did that come from um it was given to me by my supervisor i believe it came from the mayor and um i mean we have to go out even though our office closes at four that doesn't mean that we get to go home right that second i mean we can have work orders that we have last minute people calling in, we need to get out of the board in order for public works to be able to get to those first thing in the morning. We were told we were not allowed out the back door at four, and we have to wait for someone from uh, the police department to let us out. And the day that Cindy was actually speaking about, um, there was no policeman in the area, and the dispatcher was on a call. We can't wait for someone. I mean, if I had been somewhere, I was stuck. I couldn't get out. Um, she's talking about this key that she gave Teresa. Yes, she gave Teresa. She actually told her to make a copy and give it to us. Then she retracted that and said no for her to keep it and put it in a place and use it all for emergencies. Well, I mean, me getting out of the building is not an emergency. What if we're in that same situation and then we're fired? I mean, how am I going to get out when I have words? I'm not to leave the building until someone else lets me out. Well, I, just to clarify, and I, whatever, in the back, the only two people who have the keys are the two supervisors. They open it, come in. What we're trying to do is to create a safe situation there. So when it's locked up, I've even asked, last time I asked y'all, when you leave and you have to be out during the day, please lock the bays, please lock the back doors. That's the vulnerable place. I mean, I don't want to talk too much about it because then people will know, but we have some vulnerabilities in our building if someone wanted to do harm. So we're trying to secure those vulnerable spots in our building. Up front, we've got a key and, and the main office, and the, uh, this office, we have the, uh, I mean, I don't know that there's a problem, if there's a problem with the police, there's a dispatcher there all the time. I'm there probably to 5, 30, 6 every day. I can let them out if they need out. Mayor, they just stated this is a problem. There's no need to try to argue with well, then let me ask you, are we going to be consistent and give keys to every single employee in the building? And how does that, does that protect or not protect the rest of the employees and everybody? I mean, the only Why are we hiring people we don't trust to have a key? Well, the doors are only locked to keep people from, from the outside coming in, not from the inside leaving. And right now, the inside people can't leave. Okay. Julie's at... I'm sorry, I can't speak. Um, every police dispatcher, 
part-time dispatcher has access to their office via the police door. Uh, part-time dispatchers have access to the bag. The full-time office employees have no access. Um, she spoke that the door is always open. No, it's not. I got there one, one day last year, the week before last. The front door was locked. I didn't bother the police. It's not their responsibility to monitor the door. I walked around. That was before we were given these orders that we could not, can't be in the back anymore, unless it's during normal hours. So I walked around the bay, but it's always except early. I walked in that way because I'm not, it's not the police's responsibility to monitor the door. So that's just. Well, I, if, if you want to make it consistent, well, we give a keys to every employee to the building. And, and we, we can have those made, but please know we're trying to secure our building as much as possible, especially right now because uh, it's a, I mean, we, I, we I know that our building, was, our building was broken yeah. in by a man late at night. And well, him not having a key didn't affect it at all. I don't, I don't, see, I don't see the problem with him having a key. As long as there's a pipe trail who has a key, you know, that's right. You know, yeah. you don't want a bunch yeah, of keys. But some do not duplicate keys on it, too. Well, that's that way they can't duplicate right now. So Les and Derek, are you okay with everybody having keys back there to get in to your area? <laughs> well, you, you got some valuable <laughs> stuff back no. there, and well, keys get the lost. Key? Keys get lost. No, no. We, so you're not asking for a key to do that. You're not asking for a key to get back. Well, just to get you to be able to get into their homes. But I guess I, I'm I saying. I don't know. I don't have keys to that. I don't know. Which, key, which keys are you all specifically asking for? The front door. The front door. Okay. So we make it simple at this point. Just I don't think we need a motion. Can we just logically give two adult people who we trust with everything in our city I'll keys? I'm glad to give keys. We're glad to do that. Very uh, Please, again, just know we're trying to secure our building in every direction we we can secure it. Um, that's all this is about. Will you let us know if you do not get a key with the by the end of the week, or what, what, when can they have a key by? We can get them a key tomorrow. All right. But Just let us know by Monday if you don't have a key. Thank you. I know some keys that you can't duplicate. Uh, yeah, they have to do not duplicate. Yeah. Yes, that's no good. What, 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 what we've been security. doing is every key that we have, each person has one unique key that's a number that they're assigned to for the building. So we're doing the same thing for this. We'll make unique keys for the front door. Okay, thank you. Uh, there's the next item of business is uh, CDBG grant. Uh, we have to we have to make a motion about where we would do we want to go with the fire engine again to apply, apply for that this year or something else. Do I have a motion one way or the other? I'd like to motion to go with the fire engine again this year. Second. Okay. A motion and second. Any discussion about that? All in favor of applying for the, using the CBDG application for the fire engine again? Aye. All in favor, please, I'm sorry. Aye. Thanks, Sam. Sam, we're, are you voting aye on that one too? Or? Hey, I kind of like that new line. I'm going to get into that. We're voting uh, for the CBDG grant of uh, to use it on the fire engine again, or apply for report about fire engine. So all in favor, please, now the sound's back. All in favor? Yes. 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 Okay, thank you. Any opposed? Okay, that's where we'll move forward with that. Uh, <coughs> whoever's here. Okay, thank you. Um, now we get to the, the TD, uh, excuse me, TDOT grant to light um, that area. That's the crosswalk that a lot of pedestrians are using right now. Um, and also, a lot of the motorists are saying they don't have enough light there to get in and out of that intersection. It's, uh, that's something they've been saying for years. So the, I would need a motion to uh, allow us to apply for that grant. And the resolution, if you'll see it here, is. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll motion for it. I do want to ask him some questions. Okay, I'm not saying Okay, so the motion is to apply for this grant to allow us to apply for it. Uh, do I hear a second to that? Second. Okay. Um, all in favor? No, we're going to have a discussion, discussion on this. Okay. Yeah. Let's have some more discussion. For a while, we're kicking the can down the road of this. Uh, I've got a question for you, sir. It's uh, Mark. Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. This is Councilman Eagle. On this grant, does this only apply to TDOT um, 
TDOT control roads such as Highway 25 or can it apply to anything within the city? Now, uh, the criteria for the multimodal access is they want it to be on or very close to a state route. And so that's their official criteria. But even the, the sort of unwritten is that they, they, they prefer it to be, you know, all completely along the state route, which of course this one is. It's a it's a small crosswalk project. It's right there in the median uh, on 25 between Upper Ferry and Walmart. There. So let me give you two other hypothetical scenarios on this. Should, um, we've got one area near a park that um, is kind of that could use some lighting and crosswalks and everything like that, but it is not, I would say it's probably, what about a quarter mile off of Highway 25? Right there. Okay, that's one area. Would that would that hurt this grant if we did something like that? I'm sorry, did you say it would hurt this grant? Well, would it be eligible? I apologize. It would be very likely to, yeah. Uh, well, I would, I would want to, I would want to, you know, get some more detailed information about exactly where it is. I will tell you, like I said, I think in the criteria they say it can be a quarter mile away from, but they want the majority of it, you know, on a state route. I'll give you an example. I'm, I'm about to do a call like this with Hartsville. Uh, theirs is a sidewalk project on 141 Broadway right there in downtown. So just the, the more that it's Right on a state route, right along a state route, the more more likelihood of success it's going to have. Okay, thank. You. That's all the questions I had on that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, do we have a motion to allow us to go ahead and apply for this? And I think the deadline is tomorrow. Is that Mark? Right, Mark? Yes, ma'am. They pushed it to Monday just because Monday. Uh, they had a glitch with their system, but we're we're on track to. We already have a motion to Okay, we have a motion. Um, we have a motion to second yes. to apply for this. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor to uh, uh, aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you, Mark. We appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So we'll talk tomorrow about getting that application in. And that's something we do need to look at. Uh, yeah, we're going to put this in a bad situation. I think that's, no. that's one. And then Main Street crosswalks as well. Those are two areas that heavily need those. Those are traveled by children more than anything else in the city. So just something to look at now. Right? Y'all have the exact quote. I think that I think yeah, I it. Y'all. 
I've got money in the group fund to purchase those and replace those, and it's more of a cost for safety thing at this point in time. I'm asking y'all's permission for me to go ahead and purchase that. The motion to approve that purchase. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve. Any discussion on that? If not, uh, all in favor of approving for this? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Thank you all very much, guys. Appreciate okay. it. Okay. Uh, the next item is the hometown Christmas special event for that. Actually, Mr. Woodard called today and said, uh, Mr. Bill Woodard said they wouldn't actually be asking for the permit because they're going to keep it all on the courthouse lawn. So we don't have to worry about that. that one, so. Uh, then we have, uh, did you have some other questions about the parades, Councilman? Yes, I do, since I got on the agenda, we'll talk about it. Um, and I looked up, I looked this up, there was a little bit of uh, anxiety that happened after the last vote for the Halloween deal. Um, Veterans Day parade is a very important parade. Um, it's one thing that I, veterans are a big thing for me and for the American Legion, and it was kind of left up in the air. Um, and I had asked the city and I had to find out about it on Facebook that we were actually having a parade. So, um, but parades do not fall under the council. They do not fall under the mayor. They fall under the city recorder. So that's for parades. And it does say um, under section three, um, however, this ordinance shall not affect any special, special event approved or applied prior to this effective date. And I'm gonna take into account that includes our two parades, the Veterans Day Parade and the Christmas Parade. So I just want to make sure we're all on the same page with that, that we don't have to, we don't approve these at all. These happen, they just go automatically there. Okay, just, just to clarify that, it does have to come through because just so you will know, the American Legion back in February got this approval for this parade. I'm sorry you didn't know about that, but they, they I asked. I asked that. about it and nobody told me. So that I, uh, and, Mr. And, Fred Keith got it, and then Mr. Uh, Bruce Wentworth. Okay. I mean, Mr. Fred Keith is no longer with us, which is why this parade is very much yeah. important to us. Yeah. And so, so I been, don't. This what, has been in the court for two weeks at a time. Okay. I'm sorry you didn't know about it, but that's. No, I know about the parade. We didn't know what was going on. I know everything about the parade, Mayor. What I'm asking is that we not play. If there's one place that we cannot play politics with, can we leave veterans out of politics and drop it off the door? Sir, there? we're not playing politics. I've been working with these people to help them all. I okay, can. so Mr. do me a favor and just if I if I ask about a parade, just get back to me. That's all I'm asking because I, I was asking on behalf of the American. I'm sorry, I didn't. When did you ask? I'm sorry. I asked about it last week. I found about about it on did Facebook. Did you call me and ask me about this? No, every time I've ever called you, you never called me How back. How did you ask this? I'm sorry, I didn't. Okay. I didn't. But anyway, this this has been in the works since February, and the, the veterans all knew about it, I thought, and it's been in the paper. We were very, so we were very, and, and, and that being said, we were all very afraid that something would happen to the parade. We had, okay, so. Well, this was approved in February. All right. So. If we can have a clear communication on that, and I just <laughs> okay. wanted the council to know that Parades go through the city court, they go through us, they don't go through the mayor, they okay. go through the city okay. court. So. so that both parades are going forward. Uh, no problem with either one, they're going forward. So thank you. All right, the next item is, is um, ethics something violation or sunshine law. Yes, I'm gonna, act, I'm gonna ask for one minute on this and then y'all make a decision. My motion is going to be to investigate an ethics violation. Um, there was an email sent out to four members of the council disregarding two members of the council to collude in what I don't know. But it was set by Mayor Smith. And that is the Sunshine Law violation, clear and simple. It's documented because it was an email. And my wife gets dragged into this. My wife was not appointed to anything. My wife volunteered her time to help some kids out. Had nothing to do with this event. Then again, this is purely political attack against me. And I don't really appreciate it. It's unprofessional. It's demeaning. And if you have an issue with me, we can talk about it like adults in front of each other in a meeting that doesn't violate the Sunshine Laws if we don't go around to council people's backs and send an email off about it. So I don't know what else got talked about, but this was inappropriate. And this is an ethics violation right there. Now, so I'm going to motion that we investigate. This is an ethics violation, and there's my motion. 
just what would you say about the Just wait for a second. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. And there's a motion. Uh, do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a second. Then we have some discussion. Mr. Moore, would you help us? What is? Do you have a question? I'm glad to answer it. Yes. Specifically, our emails covered under our ethics violation notes. So emails are referenced in the ethics violation uh, in the ethics ordinance. And as we discussed and discussed with council several times with you, the Sunshine Law does prohibit conducting public business on items that should be covered for the board via email. Um, it doesn't prohibit providing information. I didn't go back and review the email that you sent because it's kind of been that gray zone of maybe making a suggestion. I did not realize that the entire council was not copied on that original. Well, but I, I don't think that, that it's specifically covered under the code that, that the policy is the council votes to do it on the federal investigation. I, of course, we'll do it. But that's my initial opinion based on a quick review of the email and uh, the ethics policy. And why did you not include myself and Councilman Watts? I'm asking you a question. Why did you not include? You are, if you will look. I said initial, and I came back with later, and you're all included on this. You got your hand caught in cookie jars. What happened? Yes. You got caught. Because you got caught back on it. And I don't know what else it is. Then this comes later. This came later. And I can date it all if you'd like to. So let me ask you again. Why did you do that? Well, initially, this, this was sent out because there was a Facebook post that, in spite of what the council had voted, you and your wife were suggesting everyone come out and do what they had voted against. And I sent an email saying, how do you want to handle this? It because it was coming up in just a few days. And we live in a free country. People can do what they want to do, when they want to do it, how they want to do well, it. And that's fine. The thing, and the fact that, that you are no, so me, focused sir, on a Facebook exactly. post. Me. I was thinking, would you stop, please, let me finish, just like you asked I apologize. Go ahead. Wrap this up about three minutes. Yeah. I'm, I need to leave, so okay. you guys have to pass. Well, let's, let's make a vote one way or the other, Mark, before you leave, if you don't mind. Um, I'm just not going to listen to arguments here anymore. I'm just not. I know. It's, it's, this is not what we're here to do. No, it's not. It's not. No, I agree. I'm not here to be an argument. I've said an ethical email, so that's my motion. There's okay. a second. There's we can go ahead and make second. a vote on it. Uh, by the discussion, did we have a vote, please? For a call vote or whatever. Yes. Council Mark? Yes. Council Mark, No. Council Mark, Scott? Yes. Council Mark, Yes. Council Mark, Yes. Council Mark, Yes. So, just so I understand, even though Mr. Moore is saying this is not. I'll, I'll review. Based on the motion, I understand that I'll review the emails that were sent out. Thank you very much. Motion adjourned. Motion adjourned.